Yeah, welcome back. Well, it's a story that broke over the weekend. The sad tale of a student hall week celebration that turns out as participating halls engage in a brawl that left three in critical condition. 18-year-old Emmanuel Kwashi cannot walk after he was stabbed during the brawl. He, spoke, he hopes to walk once again. Join us as Joseph Akable has spent some time with him and that's the rest of the story. It's shocking because if I can't work again, then I'll just kind of like destroy my future or something like that. So, um, so I guess you hope you'll be able to regain movement of your legs, sir. Oh, I'll work. I'll work again. Very soon I'll work. It's, it's a gradual process. I'll work. I'll work again. 18-year-old Emmanuel Kwashi, confident of working again. Flanked by his parents, he looks unhappy as nurses at the hospital attend to him. The emergency ward is where he has spent the past few days. Imano recalls returning from a visit to Adisadeo College and attempt to find a safe haven to avoid tear gas fired by officers. I was outside seeking for shelter and the police people came. And also they started to use tear gas and I'm asthmatic so I was trying to get away from beside the girl I was going down there. So I was there for a while, about an hour or two and the vandals people think when it's around, it was around 11, they were leaving. So the Ogo, I think Ogo and Castford were so chasing them out. So I saw that as an opportunity to enter the hall. So when I was going, someone just stabbed me and I just sat and I couldn't feel my legs again. I still can't feel them. Imano may not have survived if not for the intervention of a friend who identified him as a resident of Oguaho. I didn't see the person, but the person also wanted to burn me. It's when he stabbed me, he was pouring kerosene on my legs, and I was trying to yell that, oh, I'm in Ogua, I'm not part of them. So I think a friend of mine also came to my defense and was like, oh, I'm also in Ogua, so they should leave me. So that's what happened. Then. Imano's father, Moses Kwashi, wants his son back on his feet. I hope he will recover. But my problem, because now, actually, he was not uh, stable. But now he's stable, okay? But the problem is that uh, paralyzation. I don't know, and I haven't seen any, uh, for now, no doctor have tell me exactly what is going to say. Well, it will take time to take the better. I don't know actually what really my child will be in the future, whether he will come back on his feet. Uh, we hope that he gets better uh, real quick. But uh, the Concerned Association of uh, Workers at the Graphic Communications are petitioning uh, the GJA's uh, Adjudication Committee. I've got on the telephone line now Charles Benoni Okine. Hello, Charles. Thank you very much for your time here on the post. What really are your concerns? Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, first of all, let me state that um, the actions taken by us, that is uh, myself and my colleague Enoch Davis informed, is not, not out of malice against the people. It is not intended to undermine any individual executive people or so. What all we are seeking is that we are seeing clarification about the mandate of the current GDA executive, in that we, we know that their mandate ended in, uh, in, in March 2016. And um, they, they have been in office. <laughs> and we are questioning, I mean, by whose mandate are they there? Because by the Constitution, they should have called an uh, emergency general meeting for us to pass a resolution that, yes, their mandate should be extended based on the, what do you call it, the excuses that they have to tell, give us. Hmm. From what we hear from the grapevine, the excuses that they gave were, were, were that um, it was an election year in Ghana, and, you know, they didn't want the GTA elections to coincide with it, and, well... If, if that is even something to go by, we find it uh, erroneous that at the end of the day, they didn't come back to us. Okay. You know. so, so you're raising this issue now, but the timing is very important. Why do so now? Because they've been in, if, if, but by what you're saying, they've been there, they've been in this position for more than a year. Uh, uh, I mean, a year outside their mandate. So why are you raising it now if you are so concerned? Why are you raising it now and not... Um, the, the, some of these issues came up. We, we, we noticed these lapses 
just unfortunately at the tail end of this, uh, 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 getting to the run up to the elections on the 31st. It's, it's unfortunate we, 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 we haven't been paying attention to the kind of things that were happening because there was no communication. You know, EJ does a lot of things that we are not aware of. And I'm sure members in your, in your, in your organization will attest to that. That things are done here, DJ does events that members do not even know about. You see, the communication from DJ to members, to the executives to members, is so poor. In that case, have you heard from them since you put in this petition? Or is, it, is um, this petition just out there in the media, or is it something that you no, no, officially no. If, presented? If you, if, you, if, you, if you look at I don't know which copy you have, but if you look at our copy, we copied the National Media Commission, we copied, we copied the chairman of the Ethics and Disciplinary Committee, Okay. of uh, the press center, and then the chairman of the election committee. We did that just yesterday. And have they got so, back to you? No, they haven't gotten back to us. But we hear, we hear they've, received, they've received it and they will get back to us. They will respond to it. What, what, what's your reaction to those who say that you're, you're, this is a response to the disqualification of someone who is seen more as a member of the graphic, even though he's retired, that he is more of a graphic communications person and, and that you're raising this concern because he was disqualified. I'm talking about Lloyd Evans. So uh, the issue is not is never about uh, uh, Lloyd Evans. It, it's about the, 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 the gap within the Constitution. That doesn't make, you see, as, as, as uh, Gatesburg, the fourth estate of the realm, mm. if we have the, the moral right to question government officials who do not go by our Constitution. Yeah. I mean, in our own house, we have a claim. Right. It's very unfortunate that maybe somebody or a couple of them, I mean, it wasn't just even Lloyd Evans who was disqualified. It was uh, Mafan. Oh, Mafan doesn't work with graphs. Yeah. You know, he was also disqualified. So we are trying just to see what the whole thing is. You know, there are anomalies within the whole structure, but then okay. for it to be amended, so we, don't, we, don't, we don't get into some of these things in the future. Okay. And what exactly do you, what are, your, what are the reliefs you're seeking from the adjudication committee, for instance? So oh, first, we are, like I said in the, in the in, we said in the statement, we are trying to seek um, uh, uh, clarification on whether these, uh, the, the, the executives there now have a mandate. First, okay. if they don't have a mandate, then the, all the, uh, what do you call it, uh, actions that they've taken between March and now, it's not them void. Okay. So for now, maybe even with the election, then we have to find, the, we have to find uh, an interim management to organize the election. I see. Okay. Well, thank you very yeah. much for your time here on The Pulse. Charles Benoni Okain is a member of the, uh, the Daily Graphic, or graphic Communications um, staff. In fact, I'm the deputy editor for Graphic Business. Yes. Well, in this case, well, you are, you're petitioning. A member. A, yeah. In this case, you're petitioning. So uh, you're a member mm -hmm. of that uh, people who are petitioning yeah. the GJA's Adjudication Committee. Thank you very much for your time sure. here on The Pulse. 120 young leaders from nine West African countries have commenced their leadership training at the Young African Leaders Initiative Regional Learning Center for West Africa at the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Yali Regional Leadership Center is a project of the United States Agency of International Development in close partnership with the MasterCard Foundation, and it is to raise leaders from across the continent of Africa. Between ages 18 and 35 years from Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Togo, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, The Gambia, Burkina Faso and Cameroon were selected through a highly transparent and competitive process. They will undergo a five-week residential innovation leadership training featuring ethics, contemporary issues affecting Africa and three specialization tracks of study, namely business and entrepreneurship, civil society leadership, and public management. The training will be followed by a 12 week of monitoring and internship in their various countries. At the end of the five weeks, you will go out as living waters to a thirsty land, and you will make the change that Africa needs. And so I will end by asking you, whilst you are here, to conspire with each other, meaning to collaborate. Oh, I want you, whilst you are here, to perspire. That is sweat. 
I want you to aspire, that is, look up. I want you to inspire each other. I want you to conspire, to perspire, to aspire, to inspire. Jali was launched by former President Barack Obama as a signature effort to invest in the next generation of African leaders. So far, out of 22,000 applicants, about 300 young African leaders from West Africa have been trained at the regional leadership centers and are currently influencing their societies positively with several projects and initiatives. We want them to walk away with the boldness and the courage to effect change wherever they are. Our project goal is to challenge them to make a significant impact wherever they find themselves. But we also teach them to go back and give to their communities. And so that is why um, community service is an integral part of this program. If you don't do your internship, if you don't do mentoring, if you don't do your community service, you actually do not graduate from this program. And so all of those things have to be done. Then you write your report and you graduate. Kojo Williams co-founder, Center for CSR West Africa, and other Yali West African alumni shared their post Yali experiences. After Yali and the few things that I did, I got to be not just uh, a participant in one of the GIMPA you know, um, courses and all of that, I became a facilitator. I was able to facilitate a corporate social responsibility you know, uh, course. And then um, the big part of it, um, my PR agency that I've been operating for a while, uh, I decided to enlarge it. The Yali Regional Leadership Centers are a project of the United States Agency for International Development in close partnership with the MasterCard Foundation and other local and international partners across Africa. Well, they were in the news after Joe News investigations uncovered some questionable payments indicting some top management members. But it looks that the case, it looks the case that uh, the tension and controversy at the PURC will not simmer down soon as workers at its head office here in Accra are protesting and calling for a thorough audit of the commission's account. Clad in red armbands and, and shirt Wednesday morning, the workers called for the removal of their board and subsequent investigations into the dealings of the commission. John News' reporter Maxwell Agbaba has been speaking with the local union chairman Alhaji Abubakar Jabbar. On that, we were saying that we have lost confidence in the executive secretary and the board, mm -hmm. and they should immediately go. Almost two weeks you now. You want them to go to the executive secretary and who? Yes, and the board. Mm. If the, the, the government thinks or the presidency thinks they are so good that they can't do away with it, then they should take them to the presidency to work with them. Because we have lost confidence and hope. Look, our morals are down. People here are sick. Mm. If you go through a BP check with the people that you have here, majority of them will be abnormal. I, am, I, am pers I personally think I can absorb show. And I can tell you that. For almost two months now, I don't sleep well. Masa, you'll be surprised the things you will hear. We are waiting at the right time mm. that we will make presentations to the necessary authorities. Wait, we you, have, you, have, you, have, you have documents in possession. Um, you know, it's you let them go. Let them move out of the seat, and you will see or hear things that will come out. But As of now, nobody can speak. Mm. Even if the union chairman just asks a question and he's queried, then who will be able to speak? So are you saying that a union, um, as a union, you have, you know, um, some documents uh, leading to the fact that, I mean, some monies have been misappropriated and there's order? You see, we called on Yoko, we called on the presidency to get the necessary organizations to come and conduct an audit. Mm. We are calling on them to come. They should come. We don't want to say, oh, I have this, I have that, I have that. But they should come to conduct an audit. And when they come and conduct an audit, they will find out themselves. Hmm. It, is, it is a right of organizations or people to call for an investigation. And that was exactly what we did to the chief of staff. We don't want to go on playing issue, prosecuting each people on, 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 on the media landscape. Okay. We want the right thing to be done. We'll be Maxwell Agobat there with workers of the PURC. We'll bring you more on that in our subsequent bulletin.